Hey guys, we're back in the effects factory. I'm gonna show you a really important interaction that you'll use probably a ton. Just to remind you, this is all of this, these effects that you see in these tiles and everything else is now available. Everything I've been showing you for the last month, you can get your hands on now just through my Patreon, my normal Patreon. Uh, so go check that out. Let's uh, jump into the magic shop. We're in the back room here and our player notices there's a lot going on, but what could they discover in here? Well, they'll go ahead and double click and be prompted for an investigation check. Uh, let's do it with disadvantage to start. Well, they were pretty good on disadvantage and you can see a number of things materialized in the room. In fact, they rolled so high that everything they could have found has materialized here. Now that I've reset my room, let's roll again. See if we do any worse this time. Great. Now you can see only certain items materialized that they can find. If I click on them, it says I found an item. And if I open up my inventory, I can see I received an abacus. Now, as a GM, I could have had anything happen when they click on this. I could have had a, a journal entry open. I could have had a, a, you know, a door somewhere unlock. Um, this idea of having perception, I call them discovery zones. This one was a investigation check. Perception checks can work the same. I'm going to show you guys how to build one of these. Okay, so first let's talk about setup. Uh, you're going to use a couple of different modules to make this work. You've seen me cover uh, many of these uh, before. So we're going to use uh, Monk's token bar. That's what's going to let us request roles. We're also going to use token attacher that lets us make prefabs. And if we search Monk here, you can also see I'm also using Monk's active tile triggers. That's what makes things uh, smart in this case. And then we're also finally going to use the tagger module with its new functionality that I've covered, its wildcard functionality. This will let us deploy as many discovery zones as we want in the scenes that we're using. Next thing you need to do in terms of setup is uh, you want to uh, import a certain macro. Now you can find that macro in the Monk's active tiles, it's this multiple anchors based on DC. You can see how it's generally set up. And this is going to call for anchors that have hard coded in them this, this range of, of values. I like that, but I didn't want to have to change that every time. So I made a specific one that you can find in my compendiums if you use it. If you just search by DC, you can see I have uh, Monk's uh, version in here. Uh, but then I have another one It has the exact same name. Unfortunately, I'll have to come up with a better way to do this. Um, but it, uh, it just calls out low results, better results, best results, and then fail. You'll see why I use that here in a second. Once you just import that into your world, that's all it needs to do is just exist in your world somewhere. Now I'm going to show you the components of this discovery zone. First, we have this tile here. I call this the discovery area. In this case, uh, this one's already coded to the number one. Um, I'll show you the hashtags here in a second. Now, this is what's doing most of the intelligence for the system. I wanted it all to be in this tile so that it could it could you know be deployed pretty easily. The other components of the system are these uh, what I call these discoveries. This one is coded as a low result. This one is coded as a best result, and then you've got better results in here as well. I think this one's a better result. They're all essentially the same thing. They're the same tile that can be resized. Uh, they also have a glow filter applied to them in case you guys use token magic effects. Uh, but otherwise, all they're doing is really sort of giving up the, the discovery, right? And they're all set to be inactive um, and they can be interacted with on a click and they're all set to be hidden automatically. And all they'll do is play a sound and then in this case, add an item and then send a notification to the token owner that they got an item. And then it will hide itself and deactivate itself because I don't want multiple uh, players potentially uh, interacting with. Of course, you can delete these and you can customize this any way that you want. But essentially what happens here is you do an investigation check. It'll request a role. This uses the uh, token bar module. I'm going to leave this DC blank. It's going to do an investigation check. In this case, it'll be a private GM role. I'm going to bypass the dialogue entirely. Um, in this case, I have it set to auto roll for the player, and then it'll move forward every time. All tokens always will move forward in the process. 
and then it's going to wait three seconds and it's going to run this macro. So this is what's interesting here. In the normal redirect role results action, you can only have sort of a pass fail. What we're going to do is direct things to different anchors based on what we rolled. And we're going to use that special macro that we imported. So we're going to run a macro. We're going to select it from our list. Multiple anchors based on DC is our macro. I'm going to run it as a GM, although I don't know if that's strictly necessary. It might be just to be safe, just so your, your players can interact with things properly. But once it does that, it's going to call that macro that I showed you. So let's look at it. This macro is going to say, it's going to see if you rolled less than 10, it's going to put you in the fail category. If you rolled between 10 and 15, you're going to get the low results category. So if you ever need to change this macro, and you may, you can come in here and change those results. If I want low to be under eight, I would change it here. Then of course I have to change it again. This would be from eight to 16 or whatever that is. And then I won't touch low, medium, high results unless I need to create a whole other category, in which case I have to take one of these lines, copy and paste it and create a new category. This is how you can manipulate this macro for how many what what you need you can see i've already created a couple of versions of it so i don't have to create them again and these are just you know so i can just select my macro one and i know it's dc ranges and things like that but in this case i'm using the main one when i call that macro it's then going to uh, jump me forward based on the results in this case if I roll something high, it's going to dump me into this next one, best results. And the way this logic is set up, as you can see, it doesn't actually stop any actions until it gets to fail. So that's going to let me automatically cascade through all my results. It'll say, okay, best results, unhide and activate all of my best results on the, on the map here, all my best results one, right? And this is important because this corresponds to this particular zone I'm setting. Uh, and then it's going to then automatically roll into the better results. It'll make those appear, um, and then it'll make me my low results appear. Uh, in any event, it will make the sound of the heart play if something actually is discovered. And it'll tell my player that they've discovered something. And then finally, it'll deactivate this tile. So this tile uh, can't be used again unless I, as the GM, reactivate it. However, if I roll medium, it will jump me to the medium results and then cascade down and low results the same way. In any event, it'll stop here. And if I fail, it'll go straight to fail and it'll say you found nothing, right? So that's the general logic of how this thing works. And technically, and in my prefab, I have a deactivate at the end of this one as well. Uh, just for the demo, I want to be able to show you multiple times. So that's how these things work together. I did include a reset switch. So if you want to test this, this reset switch will uh, automatically look for all of the best, better, you know, low results, and it'll automatically flip them back to a reset position. And it'll even do it for the discovery zone itself. If you don't want your players clicking this at all, and you just want to manually reveal these, then you can use any of these. So this will reveal the low results. So if I right click it and hit this little power button, it will reveal all the low results. Now let's talk about how we can use this as a prefab so that we can use this over and over again. Well, I've actually made a prefab of all these components, call it a discovery zone. And here's all the pieces that you, you would expect to see now though, I'm using this hashtag. So dat dash curly bracket hash, and then the close curly bracket and everything else is using that hashtag, right? These pieces, I only have three. I have a best better, and low. And once I deploy it into a scene, I can just spam these all over the place as many times as I want. And of course, all of this is the same piece as well. So if I was going to drop this into a scene, notice I have a discovery zone here, by the way, to make it a prefab, you just create an actor, a non-player actor. I go to prototype token. I select my, my control token and I say assign token. Now, when I drag this out, if I, as long as I don't hold anything down, you'll see it went to discovery area two because Tagger detected that discovery area one was already used, so automatically incremented. Then what I would do is I would let go of this, open up my token attacher UI, hit my trash can, it will release all of these attachments. 
Now, this is a sub attachment. Those are all still together. I'll release those in a second. Basically, I'll just put this off screen somewhere where I want to have my controls, and then I'll do the same thing. I'll release all of those, and that'll make it so I can interact with all these little levers. Now, let's go back to this first one. These are now released. You can see I can move this around. I can make this bigger or smaller. I can cover a very large area with it, for example. And these right here, this is my best result. I can simply copy it and paste it. And with this best result, maybe I want this one to give a magic item. I'll probably keep the sound, maybe in some cases, and then I'll keep the hide and deactivate. And then I'll just, and I'll probably also keep the notification. I'll just change what it says. And that's how I can customize this. But again, this one is a high result. So I might put that over something I think is interesting in the scene. And likewise, I'll put my medium and my low results around as well. But with that, it makes it really easy now for this, this discovery zone to only call these out. They don't have to be in the same tile area. Uh, they simply have to be tagged the same way. And now this discovery zone will activate uh, any of these things around it. And likewise, I can pull out another discovery zone entirely. Put that in a different part of my map. And this one's incremented to three. So now this discovery zone is independent of that one. Remember that I do have the same macro being called out in either case. So if I want this discovery zone to work on different uh, tiers of results, then I have to give it its own unique macro, right? I might give it the the one multiple macro, multiple anchors based on DC, and maybe that's got uh, different different ranges. So just keep that in mind if you want to deploy multiples of these. And finally, you can see I just made a copy of these and I changed this to a an eyeball and that becomes my, my perception check zone. It just makes it easy so I don't have to go change this rule later.